joining us for this live chat is International Foray, the Future of D2C Brands, a joint initiative by IndianRetailer.com and Shipway. At Indian Retailer, we have been helping the retail, e-commerce, D2C, and consumer products community to adopt digital practices and go omni-channel by providing up-to-date news, in-depth analysis, research, best practices, and a lot more. We also keep track of changing consumer behavior and overall economic conditions in order to help brands access its impact on their undertakings. You can catch up with the work by subscribing to our newsletter on IndianRetailer.com and by following our social media channels across Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. I would also like to introduce Shipway. Shipway is the most preferred platform for D2C brands. It is an e-commerce automation platform that aims at automating all the post-purchase workflows to help D2C brands scale and deliver a top-notch customer experience, enabling them to build a growth engine by positive word of mouth along with customer retention. It offers services like fulfillment automation, RTO fraud prevention, tracking and notifications, NDR follow-ups and returns, and refund automation. As you know, Vedics is reckoned as India's first customized Ayurvedic lifestyle and wellness brand that provides personalized hair care, skin care, and wellness regimes. The unique proposition of the brand is to create products to, see, to suit each individual's body, body characteristics as in, identified by their doshas. The ambition of Vedics is to take the brand in global markets by diversifying the portfolio and launching products tailored to the environment and consumer needs of each market. Vedics plans to launch in the key international markets like UAE, North America, Europe, and Australia through a combination of D2C and part platform partnership. So today we will be discussing how national D2C players can conquer the international markets. And to share the mo show, share more info on this, we have joining with us today Jatin Gujarati, who is the business head of Vedex. Thank you, Jatin, for joining us. Hi, Charu. My pleasure. And I would like love to extend a warm, warm welcome to you. Thank you. So after Thank the you. chat, uh, we'll be having a and a session. If you have any questions during the course of discussion, you can share them in the Q&A or chat section at the bottom of the screen. We'll take the questions post the discussion. So Jatin, tell us about the brand Vedics in detail. What was the idea behind foring into this category? What strategy did you apply to reach your first 100 consumers? So Charu, uh, Vedics as a brand is about three years old, but as an organization, um, we have been in the content businesses for a longer time. And uh, in fact, we have launched multiple brands for our content uh, websites, such as StyleCraze and uh, MomJunction.com. Uh, and when we launched those brands, uh, what we realized that, and we would call the customers after launching the brand and or to understand how they are they satisfied with the products or not. And what we realized that general satisfaction rate in the industry is very low in the beauty and personal care industry because uh, uh, most of the products were uh, built for all kinds of audiences without any specifications and customization in mind. So it was in the 30, 35% category. Uh, it's not that 60% uh, of the customers were just indifferent. They did not see any result from the product. While maybe 10 to 15% saw some negative result and 30, 35% saw some positive result. So we uh, figured that there's a gap in the market uh, clearly for a customized solution that can uh, that can have a better satisfaction and efficacy rate and uh, can and we can build a brand around it. Uh, and when we further sort of uh, zeroed in on what kind of products to launch, uh, we figured that Ayurveda as a category lends itself very is beautifully to the customization philosophy because you know in Ayurveda, Ayurveda believes that everyone is born with a certain characteristics of Vata, Pitta and Kapha, certain balance of those doshas. And uh, as you grow and you interact and lifestyle changes, those uh, prakriti balances go out of whack. And Ayurveda prescribes certain medicines and uh, lifestyle changes that help you get back uh, those uh, uh, imbalances. So, uh, so there are two components to, to it. One is that Ayurveda inherently understands that everyone is a unique, every individual is a unique individual and a single approach will not work for everyone. So it, by, by definition, it, it becomes customized solution. So we built on that 
we uh, brought in experienced ayurvedic doctors on our payroll and uh, gave them this challenge of creating a creating an online solution to a, to a process that people normally experience in an offline environment it's like going to an ayurvedic doctor doing a consultation understanding uh, telling them about your lifestyle about your uh, Uh, eating habits about your sleeping habits and then the doctor will tell you okay what is the issue and maybe prescribe certain uh, certain stuff based on uh, to tackle those issues so we actually created an online questionnaire of more than 30 questions to help us understand the prakriti of the individual and then map those prakriti to a, a suite of products that we have created in house after consulting the doctors so this is how vedics was born the first problem we try to tackle is the hair care because uh, that is the biggest market uh, by as a category and also that is something that is very personal to the identity of our customer right i mean if, if you're not really if you're having a bad hair day you're not really happy about it uh, and that's uh, that so we figured that we could do something there by creating solutions uh, in consultation with these ayurvedic doctors uh, we launched about 3 years back uh, the quiz went live uh, if you see the flow you have to come in answer 30 questions it gives your uh, dosha calibrations and it recommends you certain products which uh, uh, which will help you uh, so we primarily targeting issues such as uh, hair fall hair thinning dandruff uh, dryness frizziness all the suite of uh, issues that come with uh, hair and uh, yeah so journey has been fantastic so obviously initially we are, uh, we figured that uh, there might be some challenges to how uh, customers will take this because they have to answer this questions is a very uh, high engagement process but once we went live uh, there was some there's a curve to it where we had to spend some amount of money on performance marketing to get the initial set of customers in but once they took the quiz got the products saw the benefits for themselves it sort of spread like uh, you know with word of mouth and that actually helped us scale very rapidly Uh, over the last three years, we have probably uh, more than three million customers have taken our VPQ, which we call Vedic's Personalized Questionnaire. We have delivered to more than 1.2 million customers. We continue to add more than uh, about 60 to 80 thousand customers per uh, per month. More than one lakh customers renew their orders every month with us. So those are some very big numbers. But obviously, we started very small. It was all a lot of hard work in the beginning, getting the word out, getting working with. Uh, uh you know various uh, platforms various uh, uh, ad platforms such as facebook uh, google youtube instagram to, uh, to sort of do our performance marketing but i think that has all paid off really well and uh, probably one of the fastest one of the one of the few brands that crossed the 100 crore revenue run, run rate in less than 3 years of launch yeah that's wonderful jack so i want to know uh, did you feel uh, face any problem about uh, were uh, consumers hesitant to fill the, fill the questionnaire and how did, uh, did you make sure that consumers fill all the 30 questions and will be able to reach the uh, to a to a point where you can uh, make a formulation so we see drop offs clearly the conversion rate for there's a friction right the questionnaire acts as a friction between your problem and the solution but the beauty of it is that since uh, customers are primed uh, that is an ayurvedic solution they somehow i think inherently understand that i need to understand some things about you to be able to give you the right solution right there and also once you start engaging with the question it becomes sort of interesting you know because i'm asking you about uh, do you drink enough water uh, do you get enough sleep when what time of the day do you prefer to be active is it morning is it evening what is your body frame you know what is your body eye type what is your uh, color of your skin what is the color of your tongue when you wake up stuff like that right? so and that really helps us in understanding the prakriti of the individual so once you start answering you feel okay yeah this brand probably is asking me these questions because they mean what they say and they do obviously uh, so although there are drop offs through the questionnaire but what you have seen that once you complete the questionnaire the conversion is very very high and it all sort of reflects in our uh, cpas and cacs and uh, click to order numbers and the conversion numbers of the funnel also uh, charan this is very interesting <laughs> this is a use case that came up uh, you know a single customer would order 10 regimens and then when we call the customer like why have you ordered 10 regimens you know is it like the product not enough for you so they will order for all the family members so you know they will come in they'll take the vpq they'll get the recommendations they'll place an order they'll come back they'll take the vpq from the perspective of their father then their mother then their sister then their brother 
so we have families where everyone is using vapex right uh, so it sort of creates a logistics like nightmare because when when 10 orders <laughs> get created for the same customer it's like okay is that customer for real and what is even happening <laughs> uh but but it is happening and 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 that's the beauty of the product that uh, that is built on uh, an efficacy driven approach versus a mass market product that uh, is a secure all from to secure all right so yeah i'm sure vedics has been uh, successful in winning the hearts of the consumers you must have faced uh, some toughest times during the journey what are, how did you overcame them them and what are the learnings that you are applying to your business so that you don't have to face those challenges again i think to be honest the toughest uh, challenge we faced was during the first lockdown where we were figuring out how to get the products to the customer right uh, imagine uh, doing at that time we were relatively smaller in scale imagine doing maybe 70 80000 orders a month so which means 70 80000 a customers rely on you for their monthly regimen of oil shampoo serum and then dropping that down to 500 or 1000 or 2000 because of lockdown and the customers are calling in like i need my order because they are on this regimen right and they're seeing results and they want to continue um, they want to get their uh, fill of oils but we cannot deliver them because uh, because of the lockdown so and the another factor was the supply chain gone uh, supply chains even after the lockdown was lifted and because we are essential essential category we could uh, uh, ship but the supply chain got uh, restricted so there was an issue in procuring pumps for our shampoos from international markets where we get uh, the glass bottles for our serums which uh, which also created severe bottlenecks and created delays in getting our products to the customer so that was that was the first time we actually faced on a challenge of that uh, scale and uh, basically immediately after that what we did is start localizing the supply chain uh, working with uh, individual uh, indian manufacturers to get uh, alternatives for our uh, pumps and for our glass bottles in fact there's a glass manufacturer in, in hyderabad one of the biggest in india with whom we now have engaged to get those so we did multiple things to make sure that in the future such, such kind of bottlenecks do not appear uh, that prevent us from getting the product out to the customer uh, but we also make uh, make sure that instead of having a month of inventory maybe keep two months of inventory to to absorb also in this business right every time there is a disruption in the in the in the macro environment somehow the demand shorts up so for example during the second lockdown the moment it was uh, sort of happened we saw an again again a surge in demand but luckily this time we were prepared based on the experience from the first lockdown and we could meet the demand so yeah so those those are some challenges but in terms of acceptance of the product itself uh, luckily touchwood the brand has not faced any <laughs> significant issues so far yeah so logistical issues uh, which i can say were the main that you faced during the second lockdown and the first lockdown right absolutely yeah okay so which other service providers that you are associated with currently who are simplifying the processes for you so we work uh, we have our own warehouse warehouse and we have our own order management system uh, we work with multiple logistics uh, 3pl companies like blue dot delivery uh, express b com express and uh, in fact we have a very strong relationship with all of these partners and uh, in terms of the supply chain and in terms of the speed of delivery despite being based out of hyderabad for pretty much all metro pin codes we offer next day delivery and for non metro pin code we ought to offer uh, two to five days delivery based on the uh, based on how far that pin code is from hyderabad but uh, what we are doing now is sort of uh, building out these satellite uh, warehouses to further improve the speed of delivery because we realize that uh, while customer is very loyal and they plan in advance because of the regimen so they know that when their oil is going over getting over but uh, a lot of times they would want the product to come to them as soon as possible since it's in um in in the personal care space right you don't want to wait for your shampoo or your oil so we understand that and we're building we're getting our warehouses closer to the customer so we're building our satellite warehouses all over the country in partnership with multiple other uh, companies such as ship a picker uh, yeah uh, where iq and the likes so those uh, tech innovations are happening and you know it has become increasingly easy for a d2c brand actually to do that because there are multiple players that have come in the ecosystem which offer a plug and play sort of a model uh, for you to work with so yeah so i think i think from that perspective ecosystem has evolved a lot definitely i agree to your point but just, i tell you one thing are you also using social media to promote your brand yes actually we leverage a lot of uh, so, uh, social media stuff like uh, instagram to promote our brand 
um, in fact, you've worked with uh, multiple influencers, some of the key names uh, in the industry to get uh, to, to talk about the product. But again, it comes to the responsibility, right? I mean, you have to work with the kind of people who really uh, believe in the brand. So we have worked with celebrities like Avika Gaur, uh, Kunal Kapoor, Rupali Gangli, uh, who actually believe in the product. And, and you, you talk to them and uh, they first tried the product and they realized that how useful it is for their own uh, well, healthcare, uh, uh, hair care routines. So, because as a brand, I think we have a responsibility to, to bring out content uh, that, that aligns with the brand value and the level of uh, quality that we are offering versus just, you know, just working with uh, and being active on social media platforms and working with uh, influencers. Yeah, but we leverage See? all of them. Yeah, we in fact, uh, to your point, we have announced it videos team uh, that turns out content for the for the brand content and the performance marketing content around uh, uh, like videos for ads that we use for our performance marketing. Yeah. So you're betting big on influencer marketing, I guess. Yeah, I think see that is one way to connect with the audience. Obviously, it brings a level of credibility and legitimacy to the brand, especially for a D2C brand uh, where you don't have the maybe the budget in the beginning to hire uh, an A-class, uh, you know, A-level uh, celebrity and the budget to do a campaign at the national level by leveraging con conventional uh, platforms, right? Like TV or hoardings or newspapers and magazines and print, basically. So in that context, I think for a younger brand, it makes sense to... Uh, reach out to micro influencers and uh, leverage them to connect with their audiences. Yeah. See, ultimately, uh, the product, product has to do the selling, right? Uh, the concept, the, the idea of uh, leveraging influencers to get a sort of their trial maybe uh, because it builds a credibility. And because we believe that the moment someone tries out Vedics uh, as a first time customer, uh, it it, they become fan of it, right? Because, and that's the number. That's what we see in our numbers. On an average, a customer buys Vedics from uh, Vedics regimen 3.5 times a year, which is uh, which is probably as high as any platform uh, uh, a lifetime value for a customer, right? Uh, so, so I think the, the at the end of the day, the heavy lifting has to be done by the product itself, the brand itself, whatever medium we use. Is just a way to optimize on the cost and the reach aspects of things. Uh, it could be influencer, it could be social media, it could be TV, it could be uh, print. Yeah. So the, the, you are right, absolutely right. The consumer, the ultimate goal is to attract the consumers and try and make them use the brand at least once so that they can get yeah. addicted once they start using it. Yes. So uh, tell me, product quality or pricing? What are you stressing upon the more uh, and why? Uh, from from what I have told you, you probably can guess <laughs> what what I believe in and what the philosophy is internally. Of course, product quality. From the very yeah. very beginning, we made sure that we have the right kind of advisory doctors in house who can help us develop the formulation. So when we start thinking about a new category, for example, let's say we're thinking about body care that will launch next month and the baby care that will launch in a couple of months. Uh, the benchmark is not what is in the market. The benchmark is. Ayurvedic text, right? The doctors go back to those uh, texts. They'll pour through it. They'll understand what Ayurveda has to say about body care, baby care, sleep, any category. And they, they will come up with formulations. Now, those formulations, Saru, were optimized for consumption uh, in a certain way, in the form of a churan or a lep or a kada, you know, stuff like that. The challenge as a brand for us is to take those formulations, bring out the essence and create a product that is palatable to the modern consumer. So if you see our serums, for example, the hair serums, they have a Bakuchi and a Pringaraj and these are all extracts uh, created using something called Telapaka Vidhi, which is a process of creating ex creating products in Ayurveda, where you take certain amount of Pringaraj, take certain amount of ghee, take certain amount of oil, uh, water, boil it all for a certain period of time and then the extract that you get is the extract that you use. But that will not be uh, a very efficient way of doing it or a very uh, palatable way for the customer. So what we do is we take the ex we take extracts, like pure herb extract, Bringaraj, for example, which was extracted using Telapaka Vidhi. 
then we'll mix it in a certain base which we believe will be palatable to the consumer for the serums are water based and so on and so forth so so coming back to your question about quality right so quality is one of the key uh, is the key parameter uh, we want to deliver quality as per ayurvedic text but in a format that customers understand and can relate with and can actually enjoy using the product you don't want to be a, so for example our face mask that we launched recently for the skin regimen it's all uh, clay based because as uh, i believe that kaolin or clay has healing properties but they don't they're not powder based as you would assume uh, or expect from an ayurvedic brand they are easy to apply uh, ready to apply in a right to apply format and a lot of r and d went behind it to create that with the goodness of ayurveda so quality definitely and the price see uh, good thing about a d2c brand is obviously there are certain leverage operating leverages that come because uh, you have a fixed warehouse uh, grant you don't have to distribute or keep inventory in multiple retailer locations so there's a certain cost advantage which we can pass on to the customers uh, because our store is digital we don't have to go out in malls and open multiple stores uh, so we try to keep it reasonable but obviously we are, we are uh, probably we are not luxury but we are definitely uh, mass premium that's the price point so price if it if it's a is a discussion between quality and price i would prefer co- i would bet for quality but at affordable sort of a price points yeah so consumer confidence check quality check price check you are i mean you are winning at all the points so i want to know what are the key metrics metrics that you uh, uh, keep in mind while tracking the growth of the brand so there is one thing uh, there is one thing to create a brand and there is one thing uh, uh, to to scale a brand as an entrepreneur uh, because brands are created out of passion a lot of lot of lot of commitment out of passion uh, with lot of customer insight but to scale it as an entrepreneur you need to uh, look at your pnl every day because that's the that's where the truth lies the money that comes in the money that goes out and whether you're profitable or not as a as a brand yeah. uh, and as a company we have focused heavily on profitability from very beginning uh, so the, one of the key things that we look at every day is the pnl in terms of uh, our uh, cox our aoes average order value what the customers are buying how can we get that up what can we offer to the customers to make the baskets more interesting for them and increase the value obviously on the funnel side marketing side we look at the conversion matrix you know x number of people are coming in and how many of them are buying and what are we have we done something to improve that number and if for example that number drops for any reason what has happened in the whole funnel uh we also look at our retention numbers very very closely because we believe that for a brand to really make it big uh d2c non d2c you need to bring in certain number of customers again and again and buy from you so so far that number is held up uh they are working hard to get that number further up by offering more categories to our customers for example till very recently the only thing you could have bought from us was the hair care uh, regimen now you can buy the skin care regimen Uh, within hair care we have expanded the portfolio to add uh, hair mask and uh, booster oils and base oils i'll talk about that actually in a minute it's very interesting uh, but in the skin care we have launched the regimens of cleanser moisturizers and serums uh, but when we also added uh, our face oils our face mask so we're trying to offer a very holistic portfolio to our customers again from an efficacy standpoint uh, from a very quality high quality stand point of view uh, coming back to base booster so we actually recently we launched uh, india's first base booster uh, combination wherein you have these bases for your scalp based on your scalp type it could be a dry it could be a normal it could be oily scalp and then you have and all of these bases are formulated for potency i mean they have really good oils of course right but then you have the option of adding boosters like a bringa or a namla or a, a, a nimba or a durva or a datura these are all herbs that are that act in a specific way for a specific concern so you can add up to three boosters in that oil and make potentially up to 500 different combinations so i think that's just that, that's the kind of innovation we want to bring for the customers so that uh, they feel that some brand, someone is doing the heavy lifting for them to to solve their problems uh, so yeah so to, to answer your question the metrics that we look at uh, is obviously the funnel the pnl and the retention numbers uh from a customer point of view so you are giving the scope to the customer to experiment with the products as well by making their own combinations yes yes for for a more dedicated customer who has been with us for a long time or who generally understands you know we all grew up 
looking at our moms and our dadis making certain ayurvedic combination with ritha with amla with shikakai all the stuff right so you understand inherently what is good for you and by giving that option to the customers in a digital format uh, they can pick up the boosters for example they might feel that the bringra would be good for their uh, graying hair so they take a bringra booster added to the base oil for a dry scalp make it extremely potent formulation for themselves so that's something you want to bring to the table yeah it sounds very wonderful i would love, love to try it for myself once at least so uh, tell me one thing when you are scaling your team uh, what do you keep in mind if you get in the young people they are enthusiastic but uh, i mean uh, they might be very it will might be very tricky to make them stick and make them work right if or do you prefer to get the experienced people who have experience but have a set mind which you can't move so what is your idea behind building your team uh, at vedex the approach we have taken is for functional roles we generally bring in uh, people with experience maybe 5 to 8 years maybe 10 years of experience so because what we need them to do is uh, build, build out that function so for example let's say if i'm hiring for a head of supply chain or head of operations i would hire someone who has experience in those functions because you know the learning curve has to be very very short in a startup because we don't have the luxury of building it out for 3 years or 5 years you want to like get things done yesterday right so we bring in people uh, who are experienced who can plug in their experience into our ecosystem and help scale the brand but when it comes to uh, a little bit less uh, senior role uh, we generally hire people who uh, show this uh, show a very generalist mindset who show this who have this sort of an entrepreneurial uh, zeal to be able to take on any challenge that comes their way so we have great examples of both so our head of customer services comes from industry background and he came in and he sort of reformed the whole uh, the function right and uh, helped us create a better customer experience for uh, for our customers similarly we had a head of uh, fulfillment ops who comes in with a lot of experience in that and he has helped us build out those supply chains faster but let's say we want to hire someone uh, to to as a brand manager or or within marketing as a copy team so we want someone who is generalist who uh, who can think laterally and bring in uh, insights and bring in learnings from different uh, fields and assimilate them uh, you know and and work on them in terms of uh, people generally leaving to your point uh, you know if you bring in freshers they leave i think that's not necessarily true because uh, when when you hire people and bring them in an environment which is extremely uh, passionate and driven and shares a common goal which in our case is to make vedics in world's number one uh d2 c i with a brand i think everyone sort of gets aligned to it and uh, works towards it uh, and generally if you see the average tenure in our company across ranks is very very high people have been around for 5 years 7 years 8 years right so so uh, yeah i don't think that is a factor with y- youngster the reason the, the factor with youngsters is that uh, maybe the top level vision is not percolated perc- down to the bottom uh, very efficiently and maybe that's why they get sort of dis- in franchise and in and this sort of leave uh, but uh, here we try to bring them all together into a common vision and and you can see the result in your actions right because it's such a fast paced environment you do one thing today and it reflects in at the at the top most level in your revenue maybe within couple of months so so that way i think it works out well i think the leader like you is so, is so passionate about the brand itself i mean uh, you are driving the team in a very nice way then i mean thank you that's <laughs> very nice of you to say so uh, jatin uh, tell me how do you see competition because there are many brands in the uh, d2c space when we talk about yeah. beauty they are cropping up and they are coming up every now and then so don't you see them as a competition because many of them are in the ayurveda space and few of them are in the different uh, the other different spaces so doesn't the consumer get distributed and how do you uh, face the competition and make up space for yourself correct so i think there are two points uh, to it one is market i believe is very very big i mean the online penetration itself is barely anything right now and i only talk about online penetration because we are a d2c brand so there's a lot of market share to be taken from uh, offline sort of uh, offline players uh, for a brand like us specifically especially when you consider that close to 80% of our shipping happens through tier 2 and tier 3 towns so see there's a lot of uh, pent up demand in those regions and with access of access to mobile phones smartphones and internet people are just uh, that much more used to ordering online so i think as a category as a whole there's a lot of business to be 
taken away from legacy players for d2c brands uh, we are at 2 3% china is at maybe 17% us and 13% so the business could 10x 9x from here within the d2c space it might look a little bit cluttered right now but i think the what stands what sets us apart is our key differentiation the, the key value prop that we offer which is in the customized azure space where the products are suited for you built for you and therefore are efficacy driven uh, so once you get sort of indoctrinated to the brand it's very difficult for you to leave because you can see the results for yourself we have uh, cases where customers uh, move to the us and then they just sort of kept coming back to us saying that why don't you ship it to us but then they had their sisters and brothers in india buy it from here package it up then ship it like how would you send your kids thepla or mithai i mean this is just has become <laughs> it has become that important uh, to our customers right uh, which is just uh, heartwarming so i think as long as uh, as a brand we understand what are we really bringing to a table uh, so i think we are sorted from that perspective it should not be a big challenge and also the market is growing And so uh, we can say this is the reason why you are pouring into the inter- international waters now. Yeah, I see. We realize that uh, I realize the philosophy works for everyone. You know, you don't have to be an Indian to really enjoy, and that's <laughs> been proven by Lulu Lemons of the world, where they took took something which is very Indian and then made it uh, the mainstay of their brand in form of yoga. So we believe that, uh, in fact, we have the moral obligation to take the brand international. Uh, and uh, make more people experience the power of this ayurvedic personalization customization in the form of all the products that we offer and also believe that the market is ready for it there's a huge movement to it it's been around in the since 70s 80s 90s has gained uh, speed over the last few years because of digital uh, access to content so the market is ready for uh, or is actually yearning for a brand which is authentic ayurveda uh, ayurvedic so yeah so i think you want to test out those waters starting with us and middle east and then uh, go and build out business in countries that we feel will be amenable to a concept like this especially in uh, europe and uk maybe africa you never know you know you can you get surprised from <laughs> all the time in fact one of the, some of the legacy players in india who are in this space do a lot of business in meena region uh, as an export market i think there's a lot of untapped potential there and all of this will be built through d2c right so we will build up back in supply chains uh, where the marketing team team will sit here uh, run ads and get orders and the distribution will happen locally through uh, through the supply chain that will build up so it's all in in play happening as we speak most like most probably will go off online uh, with amazon in the us next week or 10 days d2c activation will happen sometime in january for both us and middle east markets and we'll take it from there 2022 sounds very exciting for you it seems Oh yeah, yeah, lots of folks <laughs> on twenty twenty two. We are building out the team. Uh, we are building out the team. As I said, yeah, we are. Uh, two new categories are being launched uh, for sure. More will be in the pipeline. We are deepening our product portfolio, going international, launching on platforms in India. So for the long, longest period of time, the because of the nature of the product, right? You have to come in and answer a bunch of questions. Uh, we could not go to platforms, and we missed that sort of bus for the longest period of time. So we were not on Amazon, Mintra, Flipkart, Nike, or the world. but uh, this year we started listing our products on those platforms with an with an understanding that you know for a lot of our customers the the first uh, experience of a digital purchase might happen on these platforms versus our website no matter how good we make it and no matter how much we spend on performance marketing those those platforms out will always outspend us so we thought less figure out a way not very complicated to get the products there let them experience it and then you know they can always come back to the website for a more holistic experience and then if they want so they can continue buying from the platform so now we are live on these platforms so 2022 is all about building out those platforms scaling them up building out the supply chain uh, uh, launching more categories and going international absolutely couldn't be more excited yeah sounds amazing so i just want to know for our audience uh, being a d2c brand how difficult is for it was for you to make a decision to go into international waters and what were the uh, problems that you faced when you decided to, yes this is the way ahead for you i think uh, d2c non d2c the real question a brand has to face is what is the right to win in that market right why do you why should a customer in that region buy your product so for us it was a very clear value prop there is no one else offering customized ayurvedic experience 
and we feel that the efficacy of this product is extremely high and therefore we feel that once uh, once we make some inroads in that in that market we should see the similar uh, feedback as we saw in india and therefore we believe that we can build a sizable business in international market one however if you not very clear on why you should win in that market then maybe you should not launch if you feel that this someone already solving that problem uh, better than you then you know it gets really tricky then just like launching for the sake of launching as a vanity metric then then to be solving any real problem so hence in that sense we were very clear on what we want to do we face a lot of i mean we still continue to face a lot of challenges in terms of first of all understanding the regulations around product like these in those markets you need the ecosystem to come up maybe step up and help us understand so luckily we have some consultants working with us who helped us understand that building out the supply chain right i mean you you especially right now uh, well, earlier you could just go to that market have some meetings you know and meet some people and figure out the figure out the region by feel but here you have to rely on getting introduced to these uh, agents and uh, distributors and supply chain partners and you know build it out build out a relationship over zoom calls and google meets so it's slightly more tricky obviously uh, but i think uh, those challenges are not insurmountable that's something that you have to deal with as a brand and this is where you know the the uh, the that aspect of bringing in a specialist with experience in these functions really helps for example if you go out and hire someone who has built supply chains in international markets and i think that learning curve gets cut and probably we'll end up doing that in some time uh once the so we're piloting right now and once the pilot is successful which i am sure will be we'll build out the team and we'll build scale up the operations quite aggressively nice it's nice so last question uh so nowadays every d2c brand is planning to go omni channel so do you have that thing on the cards as well yes see within digital i think we want to be on as many platforms as the customer is uh, going on uh, offline we have to really create a, st- a strategy road map but i don't think we can avoid going offline as a brand because still 97% of the of our potential customers go through offline channels to buy a product that potentially could be replaced with a vedic offering right so we would want to go there it's just that we still have to figure that uh, path out yeah thank you thank you jatin for giving such wonderful insights to us it was a very nice session and uh, our audience has so- shown equal enthusiasm in asking the questions so let's take some o- audience questions i'll ask the questions one by one to you sure. and maybe you can uh, answer them all so the sure. first question is the ayurvedic segment has some major players like dabar patanjali who have a loyal customer base that may be unwilling to try products from from new brands in that case how do you distinguish yourself in the market and build a solid customer base i think see, see the as i said earlier the value prop is very clear we offer a customized ayurvedic solution wherein uh, we look at your prakriti uh, and try to give you a solution based on that versus pretty much all the brands that you mentioned offer a uh, mass market sort of a product that is built for all so that value prop is very very clear and i think the customer our customers come to us for that and stay with us for that and i think we are doing everything that we can to sort of evangelize that even more with the power of social media so yeah i think that would be the reason okay so uh, the next question is in the last two years we have one the most trend which is prevalent is that customers are becoming more conscious about the quality and safety standards of the products so what sort of safety standards certifications that your brand uses so obviously all our products are used uh, licensed and iu certified and the factories that we work with are gmp certified uh, factories where there is a very stringent quality control measure in place uh, we audit the factories Uh, we don't own factories we work with uh, third party contract manufacturers but the most important thing is that we own the formulas we do, we have an r&d team which is headed by uh, industry veteran uh, and we have ayurvedic doctors as i mentioned earlier who who look at text to create those formulations so the whole r&d process done in house to ensure uh, quality of the product quality of the ingredient and stability of the product which is then tech transferred to our contract manufacturers under uh, agreements and they scale it up uh, Uh, the, on the production site all these manufacturers are uh, heavily scrutinized by us and they are industry again they have been in the industry for a long time and they follow standard uh, procedures so from a quality and authenticity perspective the brand is very very uh, careful and uh, we strive hard to not let our customers down 
I can vouch for the products. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, expanding servicing area, increasing product f- portfolio, and handling logistical challenges are some of the key areas that the D2C brands are currently tackling with uh, the problem issues. Uh, we can say. Apart from these, is there, is there any particular area that D2C brands uh, uh, found them find themselves in a fix, or uh, what are the problem, other problems, according to you? See, I think. Uh, see. The those I think pretty much cover it, but also there's an issue of uh, given the number of D2C brands that have come up, uh, there is certain amount of uh, trust that is lacking when it comes to an online purchase versus an offline purchase, and uh, it ends up sort of homogenizing the whole ecosystem, irrespective of the vintage of the brand and the level of customers that they have served. Right, so. I think what needs to happen is a sort sort of standardization of SOPs or service levels across all brands in the ecosystem, so that uh, it should be as easy from a trust perspective to order on a on a D two C website, not on platform, as it is let's say buying from your neighborhood grocery store or a mall trade store. You should, which is a job that brands have to do, uh, and we are actively working on that. But that is something. But beyond that, obviously, those uh, the logistics issues there. Are, uh, but I think we, I think those issues are not really a problem because we have our R&D team, we have our supply chain in place, and uh, you know we keep launching new categories and new products. So actually, that is not a problem area for us. Uh, the problem, I saw a problem area. I think is as a as a ecosystem as a whole, we need to do a better job of uh, earning the trust of our consumers so that uh, they feel more comfortable ordering uh, from us. Consumers are growing in uh, indeed these days. Uh, I mean, if you talk about tier two and tier three consumers and be- the cities beyond, they have also developed that confidence in the D two C brands. I feel. It's my opinion. Yes, yes, yeah. No, I no. We also see the same thing. Yes, absolutely. The other thing that we have to talk about, which are the easy markets for D two C brands to foray into into the international arena. Which are the markets that you would uh, suggest? See, clearly, the markets are more mature. And uh, markets where customers are already used to uh, a D two C sort of an environment, which will be your developed economies of US and Middle East, Southeast Asia. So, but also they are very tough to compete in because there are so many brands out there already selling to the same sort of customers. And hence, my earlier point of very strong uh, reason to win in those markets, a very strong value prop, a very differentiated value prop. So that you very you know as a brand why you are in that market. What are you competing for? What are you offering? Uh, but yeah, but if you have to launch, you have to launch in markets that are more developed, like US, North America, Europe, Southeast Asia, Middle East. So when you go, when you went live on the marketplaces, what sort sort of differences in your sales did you see? We we saw an immediate pickup because uh, because the brand was doing so much. Creating so much noise on social media and was not available on all the platforms and was only available through the website. A lot of our potential customers would go to Amazon or Flipkart and they would search for less Vedics, uh, but Vedics will not be there, right? So they would they would get listings from other brands and they would probably end up buying. So there's all there's already a lot of organic branded search happening on these platforms. So the moment we went live, we sort of captured that demand. So it was not like it was not a step up for us. When the moment we went live, we did some business, which was maybe three, four percent of our overall turnover, and now that number is about fifteen percent. Uh, it is. See, it's like having a shop versus being in a mall, right? If you are in a mall, footfalls are guaranteed. Someone will come. Someone will enter your shop. They'll buy something. But then the other brands, other shops, competing for their attention. And versus if you're in a shop, then you're probably running some ads. They're coming to your shop. They're buying from you. So I think both has its advantages and disadvantages. Uh, what we, I, we, I as at least personally feel that lacks when you sell on a platform is the connect with the customer because uh, you have no idea uh, who the customer is. All the data is you don't have any data basically. All the data is with the platform. And 
as a very customer centric as a very data driven brand and i think i did not speak about it but we capture a lot of data as a form of a feedback loop when you buy various products because you take a regimen review you take an fup you tell us how the product was whether the shampoo was the cleaning your hair or not whether it was drying your hair out or how was the oil how was the serum all those things right so we ca- capture a lot of data, data which we use to improve the product but when you do it on platform you don't capture any data and there is no cycle that gets built in which i feel is a which is not fair to the customer because that way as a brand i cannot innovate unless i do heavy unless i uh, do extremely expensive uh, studies with a certain and that too with the limited number of customers right so those are the disadvantages of selling on a platform but the clear advantage is obviously they bring in a lot of customers uh, uh, audiences at least who potentially convert into a customer so yeah so those so the are the pros and cons are there yes yes but we saw an immediate uptick and that continues to scale as we speak it went from 2% of our sales early this year to 15% of our sales now i think that number is going to stabilize at around 25% whereas the bulk of our business will continue to come from d2c brand because that's what we know that's what we understand and that's what we want to do uh, because that is what is right for the customer as it helps us keep keep innovating on the product side agree and it helps you stay connected with the consumers directly also absolutely Yeah. yeah. So uh, the next question is: uh, You have recently raised the funding of four million, and how are you deploying those uh, funds? Uh, how will be using it, allocating it, and uh, any plans to raise the funds uh, going ahead? More funds going ahead. Right. So the last fund we raised actually was last year, uh, and uh, and uh, we uh, we actually are using that funding as we speak for our branding efforts. uh there is plan in place and you know as a gc brand you're always figuring mm-hmm. out how to grow your business and there's always growth capital that is required uh so we'll see uh, we'll raise more money when required and when the opportunity comes yeah okay so uh let's talk about men's grooming now we have been talking about the grooming but we haven't uh, t- been gender specific i guess uh, this is from sorab i a guy only so how is the men's grooming segment growing uh, for you and uh, what are the offerings that you have as compared to women uh, for men currently so we uh, actually all our ranges are available for both women and men so in the hair care segment we have offerings for both men and women uh where the ingredients are customized for a men prakriti uh, versus a woman prakriti for our skin care segment again we have uh, offerings for men and women but those are not in the sort of uh, those are more the, as a regimen for the skin care as a category we are actively looking at the grooming category uh, where we might come up with ayurveda based uh, herbal shaving creams uh, beard oils growth oil beard growth oils uh, post shave balms and etc but that is still in the pipeline and a lot of work has to go in there before we launch it but all our range all our offerings as i said is already available for both men and women differentiated so exclusive range for men is on the cards yes it is i mean in the skin care it is there from a grooming perspective it is on the cards yes nice so last question uh, jatin for you which technology is because you talked about uh, capturing consumer data so which technologies does the company use to gather consumer data and is the company planning to adopt more emerging technologies going ahead uh, you know we are we are one of the few uh, d2c brands uh, that has a sizable tech team and we have a cto you know normally when you're a d2c brand you speak to in the market they have plugged in with tech available in the ecosystem you know there's the the shopify or woocommerce for your shop for e-commerce need this shipping partners like shipfair uh, then there will be uh, oms systems the order management system there will be warehouse management system that all gets plugged in Uh, there will be CS part that gets plugged in. Uh, we have a sizable tech team that develops, builds technology on top of Shopify because uh, because of the nature of the business, right? Because we have a we have a questionnaire that has to be submitted, and we have an in-house order management system that also acts as a live dashboard across all parameters, be it customer LTV, be it PNL, be it delivery percentages across pin codes. So we have built a lot of technology, and uh, I think going forward, what uh, we will continue to actually double down on internal tech team to build out uh, for example our app offerings etc uh, but we are not averse to taking in technology from the market and plugging it in wherever convenient for example we do use a warehouse management system which is of the rack and gets plugged in into our own oms and uh, we also use api built api based uh, tech solutions uh, for cs something like clever tap and uh, stuff like that yeah so so we will continue to evaluate uh, technology because that's the crux of it right ultimately you have yeah. to make the process more efficient 
uh, squeeze out the efficiencies uh, in the form of uh, lower cost, uh, lower price points for the customer. So like a flywheel that keeps uh, churning, right? Lower prices, bring in more customers and that helps uh, make the process more efficient. And technology yeah. is the backbone of any D2C brand. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Jatin, thank you so much for the wonderful session and you beautifully answered all the questions very patiently. Uh, I would like to th thank you again for sharing the valuable advices, such wonderful insights. And it was a very nice session for the audience and they enjoyed a lot. It seems the way they have asked the questions. Uh, thank you once again. So it going ahead. Pleasure, Charu. Yeah, yeah. To be on this. Yeah. Yeah. So going ahead, we'll be organizing many such webinars, discussions and events in 2022. And we are hopeful that retail industry will definitely flourish in the coming years. Till then, wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye.